What's up, everyone? I'm Alex from The Faceless and Conquering Dystopia. Here's a shout out to Metal Wani. Hey, Alex, how are we doing? Good, how are you? I'm doing great. What's happening these days? You, you guys came up with a mind-boggling new album, Conquering Dystopia. Thanks, so, man. The expectations were a lot, looking at the lineup. Four different guys from, you know, four different zones. You guys come together and, you know, come up with this album. What was the initial, you know, idea in mind? How to proceed and what you guys wanted to do? Um, well, we weren't really sure exactly what we wanted to do. Mm -hmm. um, but we knew we wanted to make a cool metal album. So, mm -hmm. uh, originally we were going to kind of try to make it a super death metal album. Okay. And as we started writing, we kind of ended up taking it a little bit more progressive or a little more melodic. I think it still has some very like tech yeah. elements for right. sure. Right. Um, but I think what came out is just stylistically more how we all write, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so it started with Keith and Jeff, and they approached Alex Webster and I about doing the other instruments, right. and. Uh, it kind of just went from there. It was obviously from day one when I first got approached about it, it was a huge, huge privilege because those mm -hmm. guys to me are all kind of legends, you know, especially right. uh, Jeff Loomis and Alex Webster. Um, you know, I've been listening to Cannibal Corpse and Nevermore since I was really young. Right. And uh, especially Jeff Loomis, he's been one of my favorite guitarists for a long time. I don't tell him that. <laughs> you know, I don't, don't want to weird him out. but That's quite common for him. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, I, I joke around with it. Uh, now, now that we're actually good friends, you know, uh -huh. uh, which is super cool. But uh, yeah, so we basically would write the material over the internet. Um, they live out on the west coast, I right. live on the east coast, and uh, they would send me guitar parts and that sort of thing. And I would transcribe the drums and MIDI and send them my ideas back. Right. And then once once everyone was kind of okay with it, um, I would start learning the parts and. Mm -hmm. We just went went like that uh, for for weeks, or I guess months, really. And uh, yeah, it, I think it turned out really good, man. There's some things I wish I could have had a little bit more time to work with on the okay. album, mm -hmm. but overall, I'm really happy with how it turned out. So awesome! And and were there you know any sort of uh, things like you 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 probably had to step a notch, you know, higher on this album uh, compared to what you have done previously in terms of songwriting because the riffs written by these guys are chaotic. Uh, they absolutely are, man. Yeah, there was definitely some pressure from that. Like, I wanted to uh, step up my game, so mm -hmm. to speak. Uh, par partially because, you know, uh, the, the, what they were writing was so cool. I wanted to write cool drum parts to match. Mm -hmm. But also just because, uh, you know, I felt like the guys involved uh, were so such kind of like big names, and I knew it was going to be an album that was heard by a lot of people. Right. Uh, that I wanted to do something that caught people's attention, and I didn't want it to be a kind of thing where uh, it was like really sick guitar shred album mm -hmm. with half decent drums. I wanted it to be like you know really sick guitar bass album with really sick drums. drums. You know, so All I, right. I wanted to try to outdo myself, which I'm actually <laughs> regretting now slightly because. Because now we're playing live, and originally it was going to just be a studio project. We're actually <laughs> right. So now I'm uh, having to play all these parts live, and uh, it'll be fine. But it was—it's just kind of funny, you know. Right. That's cool because you know you're very well versed in the studio, and and at the same time you're well versed in the live performance as well. Thank so, you. So, so well, you know, what's your approach? Do you find your approach to the kit different between the two? A little bit. Um. In the studio, I'm I'm much harder on my harder on myself. I mean, I'm hard on myself in both environments, mm -hmm. but uh, in the studio, you know, especially when I'm recording with a producer, I spend an enormous amount of time preparing. Um, I I like to go into situations like that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, making it not only as easy on myself but as easy on the producer or engineer right. as possible, and. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, just because I don't really, I don't want to go in there looking like an idiot, you know, <laughs> right. or being really unprepared. But, uh, you know, so I, I spend probably, I don't want to say more time preparing, but I definitely spend more time stressing out about it, which I guess <laughs> makes me prepare better. Um, 
Cool. In live, live, I stress out in a very different way, but I also know that like little slip ups aren't going to be as noticed, you know. Yes. But uh, I'd say all in all, you know, I do prepare kind of about the same for both. I spend about as much time rehearsing the material beforehand, and uh, you know, it's just live. It's just a different environment. There's more right. room for you know, kind of exp expressing yourself yes. a little bit. True. And cha changing things, you know. So in the studio, I, I generally for this style of music with metal, I have a uh, an idea of how I want something to sound. So mm -hmm. I want to get that perfect take that's like that. Whereas live, I can kind of stray from that a little bit. Right. Uh, cool. If that makes that. Some sense. <laughs> right. And how's the approach when it comes to playing with faceless? I mean, uh, both are highly technical, but there must be you know something where you feel that yes something is different in Conquering or maybe something is different in uh, Faceless? Yeah, um, well both both are very mechanical um, styles of drumming mm -hmm. where I'm kind of for the most part trying to emulate what's on the CD. Right. Um, but the Faceless even more so I'd say especially because I didn't write those parts I don't mm -hmm. feel quite as comfortable uh, changing them dramatically. Okay. Um, so I do try to stick more to the album for that stuff, it's especially for the material off Planetary Duality, which mm -hmm. I feel is uh, I feel like is very well composed uh -huh. for a reason. Um, the facial stuff is more difficult, I would say, just because it's faster, mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of it's actually out of what I consider to be my comfort zone with that. Okay. Um, so before faceless tours, I spend a lot of time trying to get my speed chops up and that yes. sort of thing. Your drum videos on YouTube, uh, the, uh, I could see that. You, you, you're fond of covering various bands, if I'm not wrong. I've noticed you covering Whitechapel. Oh, yeah. Uh, even, you know, Faceless, even before you joined, I guess. And yeah, no, I, I, uh, yeah, I do a lot of covers, I guess, too. I don't do as many right now, mm -hmm. and I'm focusing more on original material right now. But, uh, yeah, I did a lot of covers. I'm a big fan of Whitechapel. I think they're all super sick. Um, <laughs> Really excited to hear their new album. Yep, so. coming out later this month. Yeah, I can't wait, man. Perfect. Yeah. So, you know, in a simple, you know, it's a pretty simple question. So, if I would have to ask you, how would you describe the Alex Rudinger drum sound? Oh, man, I don't even know. Um, <laughs> uh, I guess metal, but hopefully different enough that it's not like your stereotypical <laughs> metal <laughs> drumming, you know i don't know man it's funny because i uh you know obviously i'm known for playing metal a metal right. drum stock that's very mechanical i guess that would be another word i would probably use mechanical <laughs> but uh in the last year or two i've been kind of interested in a lot of other things and mm -hmm. i really want to I, I would like to invest even more time than I already do into learning other styles of music but it just so happens that at this point in my life i keep i keep uh getting opportunities or uh, gigs that basically want me to keep doing what I'm kind of already doing, you know, uh -huh. the more stuff. Um, so it's hard for me to make as... I've been really busy touring and recording. It's hard for me to make as much time to do other things, but I, I spend a lot of time right now just trying to focus on improvising, playing on a much smaller kit, mm -hmm. you know, actually playing all right-handed even, not open-handed, and uh, just trying to develop my feel more. Mm -hmm. Um, cause that's, it's important to me that I keep improving in some way, you know, I don't want to do, I like what I'm doing now, but I don't want to do, just stick to it, you know, you just want to yeah. expand. Yeah. I don't want to do the same thing forever. So right. I agree with that. And, and since we're talking about the different kind of music, uh, somehow, uh, m like most new kinds of music are fusion of already existing musical styles. True. So in your opinion, uh, which musical style has the biggest potential to enhance? Um, I'd say like a lot of the gospel guys uh, and a lot of that whole genre of drumming, I guess, uh, mm -hmm. gospel drummers, I, I really like the way they approach the drum kit. And uh, I think mixing a lot more of that with, with metal is going to make for a really interesting style of metal. Right. And in right. fact, uh, there are a couple guys that do that kind of thing already that I think are really cool. I know for one, uh, like the drummer of Whitechapel, Ben Harklerod, I talk to him sometimes mm -hmm. and... Uh, I like I've I've actually heard some of the stuff off their new album already Ooh. just because I know I know some of those guys in the producer and I like that you know with him mm -hmm. uh, you know it's like really awesome metal drumming there's tons of thrash beats blast beats double bass all that stuff but then whenever there's not that it's like some really cool gospel fill or gospel lick mm -hmm. and it's it's interesting to me and I enjoy it because it's almost 
it's like a breath of fresh air. You hear, right. you know, a feel that you wouldn't expect to hear in that genre of music. You hear mm -hmm. uh, just something different that hasn't been done. You're, it's not just a single stroke feel going across the toms high to low. Right. You know, it's right. It's it's a nice change, and I'm, you're starting to see obviously all the time now with YouTube and everything seeming so like omnipresent. I guess uh, yeah, right. you know it's it's becoming more and more that you see that kind of thing all the time, and I think that's cool. So I think as those things continue to mesh, that'll create a really cool style of Absolutely. drumming music. So right, right, I agree with that. And you know these days the musicians are, you know are quitting the bands once they form due to financial issues. And, but there are few who manage both the band as well as a day job. Uh, how do you manage? Yeah, man. It's uh, well, basically, I am. I'm 22 years old, mm -hmm. uh, so I'm still relatively young, I guess, right. uh, uh, compared to what a lot of people think, I guess. Um, so I still have the luxury of actually living with my parents, which I'm not at all ashamed to tell people. Um, right. Because I know some people my age really want to move out. But, uh, you know, I, I could move out right now. I've made some money the last couple of years drumming enough that I could probably, you know, get a small place and uh, pay rent and kind of mm -hmm. struggle to get by. But mm -hmm. for the most part, what I'm doing right now is I'm trying to take advantage of the time I, I have living at home still since my mother is supportive of what I'm doing. And I'm trying to be really smart, smart with my money right now so okay. that way I save for my future. So when I'm a, a few years older and I do move out... I uh, can afford something a little bit more comfortably without stressing. But right. to answer your question, you know, it's definitely not easy. I'm definitely, uh, I make money doing what I'm doing, but it's definitely not enough. It's, yeah, I think mm -hmm. it, it could be enough to live off of if I was really hustling as far as like doing, you know, the Skype lessons, which I do very regularly, and mm -hmm. uh, some session work, which I do somewhat regularly, um, and then touring, of course. You know, it's definitely possible, mm -hmm. and I definitely think I could be already doing it, but I think it, it's definitely hard either way. So I'm trying to right. plan for the future right now. Um, yeah, so I think a lot of people a lot of people think that just because you're in a touring band, you know, you're making a lot of money. And That's not the case anymore, man. <laughs> no, definitely not, man. I mean, maybe if this was 20 years ago, you know, a band right. like The Faceless would be... <laughs> <laughs> All right, I agree with that. So, how did it feel when you, you know, found out that uh, the Indie Indiegogo campaign was already done by the first day? Oh, man, I I couldn't even believe it because I've seen some of those Indiegogos be really successful before, but uh -huh. and I, I I kind of figured like ours would do okay because like it's Jeff Loomis and Alex Webster, man, like right. and Keith Keith is obviously doing super well also. Yeah, and so I was like, oh man, this has got to do well, but I was blown away that it did that well that fast and obviously it was a it was a privilege for me too just because you know since we had more money in our budget it allowed us to uh you know do the whole recording more right. comfortably and that's the only reason we were even able to go to uh, originally we were gonna track all the drums here at my house mm -hmm. and uh but because our budget was so much higher than we anticipated we were able to go to audio hammer and uh Ooh. yeah and i'm actually going to audio hammer again on thursday so um, for a different a different project uh, mm -hmm. for a session job I'm doing so I'm pretty excited yeah I love going down there man and it was such a privilege working with Mark Lewis I love that guy oh that guy is amazing he's currently working on uh, Cannibal Corpse album yep I think I might see a couple of, I think I might see Alex while I'm down there actually because <laughs> I know they're, they're doing vocals right now so All right cool the first person to talk about your uh, sound was when I was having a chat with him uh, Carl Sanders. Carl Sanders. Yes, and the moment uh, he said, I was right there at NAMM, and the first thing I heard those riffs and the drums, and I was like, this is the evolution of death metal. That's awesome. <laughs> that were the words coming out of his mouth, so I was like, uh, I couldn't, you know, we were not there. We are far from NAMM, so uh, just got to know from my friends there that the show was amazing over there, so hopefully in future we make catch you guys here in India. Oh man, I would love to come to India. That's one of the, uh, I feel like it's one of the only major markets for, for metal that I, I haven't been to still. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'd love to go there. One of my good friends has been there a few times. His name's Anoop. Have you talked, you've talked to Anoop, I think, right? Anoop? Uh, no. Anoop Sastry. Uh, he, he plays. Anoop Sastry from Sky Harbor. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The guy's Indian, but he stays in US. But I've seen yeah. him playing so many times here in India. Yeah, that's that's the thing. Yeah, and Noop, and he lives uh, like five minutes from me. 
actually. Oh, cool. And I've actually known Anoop since I was like 12 years old. So oh, yes, I've seen your, your photos together. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got it. Good now. friends, man. Yeah, yeah so I know he's been over there to play a few times with Sky Harbor, and he speaks highly of it, and I really love. It. So, yeah, maybe maybe conquering dystopia will come. I don't know. We'll huh. see. Hopefully, yeah. If not conquering dystopia, at least faceless has to come here. Oh yeah, man. The faceless. Our priority right now is uh, just writing new material. Yeah, and... I was gonna talk about that. What's the status? Because autotheism was, you know, it was like bomb came all of a sudden and just blowed things together. Uh, what yeah. about the next album? What's the plan and what's the current status? Well, we definitely, uh, you know, I actually, I joined, as you probably know, I joined after Autotheism right. had just released, but, you know, I was well aware of the status of, like, the band and also, like, what happened with that album, uh, just from being, like, a fan and also being close with some of the guys. And, and you're right, it did kind of just, like, come out of nowhere. There wasn't much of a campaign yeah. for the album. And uh, so this time around, we're planning right now to kind of have more of a campaign to promote the album better. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be out with Sumerian, right? Yeah, we're staying with Sumerian. Right. And uh, we, I've actually heard some of the new stuff. Um, oh, cool. he, he's been sending me some of the new songs as he's writing parts and that sort of thing. And the last thing he sent me is so sick. So oh, I'm really cool. really excited for more for more and for people to hear it. Um so yeah, that's that's really our priority right now is just to write and also plan a better kind of campaign for the album for when it comes out. But uh, we're gonna do. Um, actually, I'm not sure if it's announced yet, so I don't know if I can actually say what we're doing. But we're doing a tour in um, July, August, mm -hmm. and we're gonna be writing until we do until we leave for that, and then we're gonna do that tour. Okay. And then we're gonna come home and finish writing. So. End of the year release. Probably, I would say realistically, like either end of the year or very early next year. But it's very much our goal to get it done faster. Mm -hmm. um, that obviously there was a long period of time between planetary and autotheism. Oh yeah, and uh, so we're trying to definitely not do that. Like our our goal right now is to to get it done. You know, but obviously at the same time you can't rush the things to yeah true creative process too much. But uh, we it is absolutely our goal to get it out to people in a more timely manner. So. Sounds great. Um, yeah, I'd say late this year, early next year, I think, you know, I, I'd say at the end of the day, that's kind of Michael Keane's decision, but right. but uh, that's what we're shooting for. And uh, other than doing this tour in July, August, you know, that's the only other touring plan we have until the Is album. Is it the done. U.S. tour or you guys are heading to Europe? We're doing a U.S. tour. Okay. Uh, well, North American, I think. I think it goes into Canada also. Mm -hmm. And okay. then uh, I think our goal is to, we know we're really overdue to go to Europe. We haven't been mm -hmm. um, in a while, so... I think, uh, in fact, we haven't been at all since since I joined. Right. So, we're doing, like I said, we just priority is to do the album. But then after mm -hmm. that, we've already been talking about trying to get back over to Europe because we're okay. so overdue. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, that's probably our In, goal. Right. So, yeah. To come to Europe. Yeah, Europe is a great market as well for you guys. Just yeah. the right time and right opportunity. That's it. Yeah, exactly. We want to get like a good tour off or something. You know, I think I think a lot of things will kind of come together more so when the album's finished. Yeah, so. absolutely. So if I would have to ask you uh, to define the new music or new stuff you guys are writing in a sentence, how would that be? Um, ah, oh man, I don't want to speak too much on it yet, <laughs> but um, it's very... What I've heard so far, to me, is very technical, but mm -hmm. still very much in the prog direction that autotheism was. Okay. But, uh, but it's more, it seems to me like it's kind of more, it sticks more traditionally to the band's roots uh -huh. while still stepping in that direction, you know? Right. Um, it's actually pretty refreshing to hear. I'm pretty excited about it, so... I think it's, I think everyone's gonna like it a lot. I think both people, from what I've heard so far, people that um, we're more into planetary or more into autotheism. I feel mm -hmm. like it, there's a lot of, it's almost more of a mesh of both, you okay. know, but it's hard to say. We don't have that much material right. written yet. Still um, in the early period. Yeah, I'd say we're still kind of in the early areas, yeah. so it's hard cool. to say, you know, but what I've heard so far, that's kind of what I think, anyway. Perfect, so. Alex. Uh, do your friends in uh, India, do your, um, you know, guys who follow your music, uh, is there a message? Um, well, 
I guess my message to anyone over there listening to anything I do is thank you so much for the interest and uh, please continue to watch and listen and uh, hopefully sooner rather than later I'll be able to come over there and actually play for you all and I look forward to that time.